Hello, everyone. It is great honor for Globe Visa Singapore headquarters today to have Mr. Lin with us. He is the head of academic strategy of MindStretcher. Globe Visa helps tens of families immigrate to Singapore successfully each year. For our clients, when they think about applying immigration to Singapore, they mostly think about giving a better education for their kids. So they really care about the education system. So that's why we have Mr. Lin today to give a better insight of the system. So Mr. Lin, can you introduce my stretcher first? Yes, thanks very much for having me here today. So my stretcher is actually one of the leading educational institutions in Singapore. It caters to a broad range of students from age 4 to 16 years old across primary, secondary and even junior college level. So we have an excellent track record of more than 20 years in the industry with more than 20 centres spread out across Singapore. And uh, if you look at our program here, we have a very good track record in terms of getting students to the top schools in Singapore. So with that excellent track record, MyStretcher is actually one of the trusted providers for many parents and students in the country. Okay, when Mr. Lin was in school, he was also a top student. Can you introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. So let me just introduce a bit of myself. I'm uh, Mr. Lin here, Wei Lun here. I'm uh, the academic team lead at MyStretcher, and I'm also overseeing the AEIS program at MyStretcher. So actually, I graduated from Columbia University, where right? I studied economics at Columbia, and thereafter, I went on to Cambridge University to do a master's degree in economics. Okay, uh, Singapore has both international schools and local schools. So can you introduce to our clients what are the major differences? Yes, certainly. So actually, if you look at the local schools in Singapore, these are run by the MOE, right? So the Ministry of Education within Singapore, and it's based off the syllabus and the curriculum that are developed locally by the ministry. In this sense, actually, if you look at it, we are preparing students for the national examinations. For example, uh, the GCE O-level examinations, the GCE A-level examinations. So if you look at the academic grounding, the academic foundation, it's very solid, it's very rigorous in that regard as well. So that's one aspect. And if you look at it in terms of the school fees as well, actually you can realise that it's, it's very much affordable, right, as well for the locals as well. So that's one point to take note. Uh, the other point to take note is if you are looking at it in terms of the international schools. International schools, they tend to cater to a more diversified audience, uh, a more different student population in terms of you know, their nationalities, you know, their different cultures, different places that they come from. So that's one thing. And uh, because of that, actually, we realize in terms of the languages of instruction. Uh, in Singapore itself, in the local schools, it will tend to be English. English is the primary language of instruction. For international schools, there could be different languages, right? So though English could be the primary language, there could be other languages that are used as well. Maybe their own language of the country. Generally, more administratively speaking, if you are looking at the school fees, the school fees will tend to be higher as compared to the local schools. But uh, in terms of the facilities, in terms of the range of you know, amenities and services available, it could be broader in that regard as well. Yeah. Okay, then if the students choose to learn in the local schools, mm. what is their education path? Mm. So, so that's a very good question. So if you are looking at the students in the local school, you see that actually our local schools itself in Singapore have a very good track record of getting students to the top universities in the world. If you look at it, many of our students in schools actually get, uh, you know, move on to the top universities like Oxbridge, Ivy League universities. And if you are just looking at just the international examinations, be it the PISA examinations or other international exams, our students all do very well in that regard. So what is it that really helps in this, uh, in this regard? It's really the different pathways that are available within the country itself in terms of the local education system. You'll see that actually as our system continues to evolve, there have been new pathways, new options that are available for our students. So for example, for students who are moving on from primary school to secondary school, you can see that they can choose to either go on the four-year program, so they go to four years in secondary school, at the end of four years, they will take the national examinations, which is what we call as the GCE O-level examinations. And then after that, they can choose to go onto different routes, maybe in terms of junior colleges, where they prepare for universities, or they can go on to polytechnics, where they pick up a more practical skill for their work and their career. So that's one pathway that's available. Another pathway that's available, actually, it was something that came out in Singapore, is what we call as the integrated program. So the integrated program, what's that? The integrated program actually allows the students to bypass these four years, right? So they do not need to take the O-levels at the end of the four years. They can skip that and uh, instead they can go straight on to junior college. So you can think of it as is this six years program combining both secondary and the junior college education. And then at the end of the six years, they will either take the GCE A-levels or the international baccalaureate, which will then ground them entry into university. So as you can see from this, actually, there are many different pathways uh, if a student were to come to Singapore, for him or her to really choose the one that is most suitable based on their interests and their attitude and their inclinations as well. 
Okay. Yeah. The, if the students are already studying in mm. international school, if they want to transfer to local school, they need to go through a test called mm. AEIS, right? Yeah. Can you explain more about what the test is like? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So actually, if you look at the AEIS itself, right? The AEIS actually what does it stand for? It stands for the admissions exercise for international students. So actually, it's the primary pathway by which an international student mm. can gain entry into local schools in Singapore. So you can think of it as essentially it's a test, right? That the students have to take. Uh, you will assess their ability in a few areas. Primarily, you can think of it in the areas of English and mathematics. And it's for entry into our local schools from primary two to primary five, and then from secondary one to secondary three. So that's actually how it works. Uh, before this AIS, actually for primary school students, it's important to take note that they also have to take an additional test, which is what we call as the CEQ. So the CEQ actually stands for the Cambridge English Qualifications. So for this test, you can think of it as it's actually an English test. Uh, the student has to clear it, they have to pass it, before they can go on to take the primary AEIS mathematics test. Uh, essentially what we are doing here, if you look at the AEIS, is really a way for us to assess that the students themselves, they have the right academic foundation, they have the right appropriate ability level, so that when they come into our system, they can adapt, they can learn, and then they can thrive within the system. So that's actually what the AEIS is all about. So, yeah. Okay, mm. and based on your experience, mm. what is the most difficult part mm. to take this test? Yeah. So definitely actually based on our engagement with parents and students, there are several challenges that they face. So actually number one, because all the tests, they are conducted in English. So you realize if the student's native language is not English, he or she may find it very difficult to understand the questions. And uh, we have cases actually of our students, uh, they are very good in mathematics, right? But they don't understand the questions, so they don't do very well for the test. So that's one key thing in terms of the language barrier, in terms of their ability to understand the questions. So that's number one. Uh, number two, uh, the other thing is that the students and the parents, they may not be very familiar with the syllabus. Uh, just one thing to highlight, if you look at the AEIS mathematics, it's actually based off our local syllabus that's developed by our Ministry of Education. Uh, some parents and students who are overseas, they may not understand this, they may not be aware of the requirements, they may not know the format of the examinations, they may not know the content of the syllabus. So with so many unknowns, they may not be able to effectively prepare for the test. And uh, really because of that, uh, they may find it very difficult to know what's going to come out and how to prepare. So that's number two. So because of that, they may not have the chance to sharpen their examination technique, uh, for example, like time management skills, etc. So these are really the few key problems that we see when we engage with our students as well. Yeah. Okay, mm. and what is the past criteria for this test? Mm. So actually for that, uh, you will realize uh, for AEIs as itself, uh, it's important to highlight that uh, MOE does not declare a so-called minimum pass criteria. In fact, if you look at it, MOE, our Ministry of Education, so that's the MOE, uh, they do not actually report the student's uh, score for the AEIS. Instead, all they report is the outcome. That means after you apply for AEIS, do you successfully get into a local school or not? So that's all that they will tell the students. That's actually our Ministry of Education has set forth certain minimum grades that you need to obtain. Uh, and it's important that you know that you need to clear, you need to get these minimum grades before you can even apply for the AEIS examinations. Okay, mm. uh, can you explain more mm. about CEQ? Because we mm. have many clients whose children's mother tongue is not English. Mm. So the CEQ test, is it very difficult for them? Mm. So, so that's a very good question. So actually, if you look at it in terms of the CEQ, it really tests on the main few components of English, right? Uh, speaking, reading, listening, writing. So as what you mentioned, actually, if your native language is not in English, uh, a lot of the common problems that we see, number one is students, they do not have a developed grammar, a developed vocabulary. So their vocabulary is not very comprehensive uh, and they may not know grammar rules. And in that case, that it becomes very difficult for them to answer some of the questions, specifically on understanding comprehension passages and picking the right answer. If you really want to do well for the CEQ, you would have to practice, right? So actually this part here, you realize that uh, Cambridge Assessment English, who administers the CEQ test, uh, they are actually very transparent. They actually share a lot of information about the exam format. They even have sample papers as well. And they even have lists of vocabulary terms that are good for students to learn. So in this regard, we will encourage students to really check out all these resources. And in fact, here at MindStretcher, we are also working with students closely to help them to specifically tackle CEQ type questions so that they are very familiar with all the different components. And the second thing is we are really helping them to build up their proficiency in terms of their grammar, in terms of their vocabulary. Because we see these as really basic building blocks that they need to do well across all the four components of CEQ. Great. Mm. I think the resources is really helpful and mm. really a good news mm. for our clients. Yes. And my mm. last question is, what do you think is the advantage of my stretchers courses? Mm. 
So I briefly mentioned about what we are doing here at Mind Stretcher. There's actually a few things here because we have talked about how we actually have a track record of more than 20 years in this industry. And the AIS test itself is pretty much modeled after our local MOE syllabus. So actually here at Mind Stretcher, our teachers and our you know, curriculum planners, we are all very familiar with the curriculum, with the examination requirements. And here at Mind Stretcher, we also have ex uh, Ministry of Education teachers who are very experienced with teaching, who are very experienced with the examination requirements at MOE. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lin. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.